Don't waste your money. Don't fall into this vitamin C trap. The internet is wrong about vitamin C and hyaluronic acid. I can't put anything on the internet that isn't true. Where'd you hear that? The, the internet. internet. Of course the internet is wrong. The internet is always wrong. It's the internet anything goes. But in this case, it is crazy wrong. I am talking about the powerhouse A-list celebrity ingredients, vitamin C and hyaluronic acid. Both are wonderful ingredients and you should use both ingredients, but you should not buy them together in combination products. It will not deliver on its promises. Hang in there and I will explain. Let's start with the deceptive internet search engines. What if I were to ask, can I use vitamin C and hyaluronic acid together? Or is it a good idea to use vitamin C and hyaluronic acid? Once you search those questions, your screen will be flooded with blogs and articles encouraging you to do so. Then on the top of the page will be merchant tiles filled with these products from left to right. Hyaluronic acid, vitamin C. So you're telling me they're all wrong? Well, yes. Kind of. It's false. It's a fake. It's fiction. That's because it's all in the fine print. Layering these products on your skin is a good idea. One that will yield plump, radiant, refreshed, and ready to take on the day's skin. But buying these ingredients in a combination is a bad idea because these two star ingredients are very fussy about the environment of which they like to hang out and how active they'll remain hanging out on your shelf. And if they're not super active in your bottle, then they won't work and what's the point? The problem is in the formula. Vitamin C and hyaluronic acid don't play nice together inside their bottles. And on top of their bad chemical behavior, they much rather prefer to be formulated with wildly different pH levels. Oh sure, the other marketers will say it will last, but no. I will make the argument in most cases it will not. They will cancel each other out and all you'll be left with is expensive water. Waste of money, waste of plant power. The crazy part to me is there are so many companies formulating them together. Some are doing it correctly, but most are not. I think over half of the vitamin C serums I've seen have been throwing in hyaluronic acid and they haven't taken the steps to do it correctly. I totally understand why many of these companies are tempted to do so. After all, most consumers will never know, except for the tiny fact that they won't see any great results. I guess they're hoping for the placebo effect? When these two ingredients first hit the market, I too wanted to formulate them together. As a chemist and a formulator, I was thrilled that they were both water soluble and acidic. It would seem obvious to combine the two, and a lot of companies did, and a lot of companies still do. It turns out, the old saying is true, time will tell, and some research too. It turns out what should be a match made in heaven with these two is more like the idea of a refreshing cooling ice cream on a hot day. But in reality, half of it melts down your hand before you can get it in your mouth. Like I said before, combining vitamin C and hyaluronic acid together, it's not harmful. It's just that the skincare can be expensive and you want your products to really work, right? For these two wonderful ingredients to stay active and be ready to work on your face day after day in that bottle, both ingredients need to be happy in their formulation. But both ingredients like wildly different environments. The easy science story is vitamin C will spend all of its antioxidant powers trying to chemically stabilize hyaluronic acid inside that bottle sitting in your drawer and in the process deactivating both, leaving you with two worthless ingredients and some expensive packaging. There are a few companies that have tried to solve this problem by chemically treating their vitamin C molecules to stabilize it and even force vitamin C molecules inside a liposomal envelope to help it stay active and stable and away from the hyaluronic acid in the formula. It's like giving vitamin C a little fat blanket to hide in while swimming in the bottle. Both of these techniques can work, but first of all, they are expensive and therefore your product will be expensive. And second, when the ideal form of vitamin C is altered or put in a liposomal envelope or given a chemical stable partner, it doesn't absorb well onto your skin. And isn't that the entire point of your product is to get results? On the other hand, I know of at least one popular skincare brand that sells it as a kit. Two bottles to mix together when you open the box, explaining that once it's mixed, it will last for 30 days. Hmm, I wonder how active it is at the end of that 30 days. Unfortunately, this company hasn't released any studies to prove their claims, and as they say, knowledge is power. As knowledge is power! So let's get you knowledgeable about this with some real science to win the argument. Then you'll be the smart one in your friend group. Okay, here we go. Let's start with understanding where they like to hang out. What kind of environment do they favor? Hyaluronic acid is by far the more chill compound of the two. If they were people, hyaluronic acid would prefer the neighborhood bar, where everybody knows your name. 
I'm at Cheers, the bar. Just had to do that. I'm excited about my new boots. I like your, your boots! And then there's vitamin C, who would only go to the hottest, trendiest spot in town. The type where you need to be on the celebrity list to get in. What I'm trying to say is that the two compounds prefer to hang out in wildly different environments. They prefer wildly different pH environments. Hmm. pH? But I don't remember what pH is. Well, pH is just a scale for chemists to use to classify how acidic or basic a compound is. Right in the middle is neutral. Water is neutral. Lemon is acidic. Onions and garlic are basic. Clearly, when it comes to skincare, we want to formulate and use products that are close to our own skin pH. Our skin's pH is five, so that's the number we're trying to get close to when we're making skincare formulations. Aha! I understand everything now. So back to our celebrity ingredients. Hyaluronic acid is stable and happy in a pH solution between five and 11. Easy for our skin to play with. Perfect, five is comfortably in that range. This makes my job easy. Now, vitamin C is a different story. Vitamin C, on the other hand, is a high maintenance molecule. In fact, as a formulator, I really have to cater to this compound to keep her happy in the bottle and keep her ready for action. The biggest problem is the various raw forms of vitamin C are most stable in a pH of two to three. As I just said earlier, this is quite a problem for our skin. If we were to slather on a solution of vitamin C in her natural form, that would be putting a strong acid on your face. Ouch! Her skin would not be happy. Just to drive home how acidic this is, acid rain falls at a pH of four. Hydrochloric acid is at three. So if you're putting straight up happy-go-lucky vitamin Z on your face, you better be hoping for quite a facial peel. Not to worry, it's the formulator's job to stabilize vitamin C in the serum, mist, lotion, etc., and get her into a more acceptable pH closer to our skin. Usually, we don't like to go up past about 4.5 for vitamin C. This is where she's most active and stable in her best form. To do this, we add some other molecules to the formula, kind of like a best friend for vitamin C to hang out with. Calm her down, hang tight till it's go time. That's when you put it on your face. But if you add hyaluronic acid to the stable solution of vitamin C, then vitamin C will choose to attach herself to hyaluronic acid every time. She really likes hyaluronic acid, wants to be her stabilization partner. In the process, deactivating the both of them. Also, hyaluronic acid prefers to hang out on higher pH than vitamin C. They're just not a match made in heaven that formulators hoped it would be. To drive home this point a little bit more, let's bring in the most important and overlooked study that was performed between hyaluronic acid and vitamin C. There were a series of experiments completed where researchers placed different concentrations of vitamin C and hyaluronic acid together and basically did a play-by-play, -play, minute by minute, how quickly they bonded and deactivated each other. They were hoping that if they played around with the concentrations of the molecule in relation to another, that they could both stay active. These researchers also thought that they could get a little clever and try the same experiments with varying levels of pHs as well. They made some of these experiments acidic, where most of the vitamin C was happy, then they made some more basic, where the hyaluronic acid was most happy. They were really hoping to find some level of that sweet spot, where the concentration and the pH would be just right because then they would have formulation gold. Unfortunately, they did not find that magic spot. What I found was most interesting part of these studies is that the chemical reaction between the two was always very fast. Most results occurred in just under five minutes. I argue that there is no way it's possible for these compounds to hang out in a bottle together for 30 days and still work on your face. If they're not completely deactivated, they will at least be weaker and why would you risk that in your pricey skincare products? The takeaway is that both vitamin C and hyaluronic acid are wonderful skincare ingredients. You can layer them in any order you want. It's best to stagger their applications so they have a chance to absorb before the next layer and not deactivate each other on the surface of your skin. Also, if you really wanna get deep into it, Hyaluronic acid works as a primer for the skin. It makes your skin more absorptive for a couple minutes. So for the absolute more efficient results, the order should be hyaluronic acid first, followed by vitamin C for better absorption, then lock it all in with a moisturizer. There you have it. Knowledge is power. Go forth and be powerful. <laughs> yes. A few moments later. Does my hair look awful now? They much rather be preferred. What? What did I write there? 
So back to our celebrity. Why is that a bad word? Celebrity. And then there's vitamin C, who would only go to the hottest, trendiest spot in town. The type where you need to be on the celebrity list. Dang it. Just to drive home how acidic this is for <laughs> acidic this is. <laughs> Once I do that, then my brain can't read anymore. 